It's one of the SoCon's oldest rivalries, what recently has been tabbed the Beacon Ice Tea Bowl. But for both the Citadel and Wofford, this game signifies much more than a cold Southern beverage. After upset wins over Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, can the Bulldogs pull off another win over a top 10 opponent and stay in the hunt for a SoCon title? Meanwhile, Wofford is led by a Terrier with a scent for the end zone in Eric Breitenstein and are once again in a battle for the top dog in the SoCon. No extra sweetener needed. It's the Citadel and Wofford coming your way next. Welcome to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Gibbs Stadium, the home of the eighth-ranked Wofford Terriers, who today host the Citadel, our SoCon Game of the Week. Both of these teams, as we get a look at the standings, in contention for the Southern Conference Championship. Wofford, one of three teams with only one loss in league play, but it's the Citadel lurking around the middle of the pack. Three and two overall, certainly still with a shot at a championship. Hello and welcome, Darren Goldwater alongside Paul McGuire. Glad to have Paul alongside sitting in today for Doug Chapman. And Paul, as we look at the Citadel, a chance for the Southern Conference Championship late in the year. That's something that hasn't happened down in Charleston in about 20 years. Well, the Citadel started out really well, 3-0, and then they kind of fell apart. They lost three in a row, and now they won last week getting it back. But I think in order for the Citadel to get into the playoffs, and I mean get in, they have to win all four games on the way out. If they're going to win all four games, it starts on the ground. It starts on the ground for both of these teams, really, Wofford and the Citadel, two of the top four rushing teams in the country. I mean, if you like rushing football, I'm a, you're really going to love this football game. You look at these two teams, they're in the top four in the nation. Unfortunately, they're in the bottom four as far as passing is concerned. They just don't throw the ball that well and that often. The problem for the Citadel when it comes to rushing isn't the ability to run the football, it's their ability to stop the run. And today they have to stop one of the top running backs in the country in Eric Breitenstein. I've been looking forward to seeing Brighton saying you read so much about this guy and he is legitimate. He's going to carry the ball a little over 20 times a ball game. The Citadel has problems stopping the run. But when you watch this guy run, he weighs 225 pounds. His eyes and feet see the same thing. Watch his feet. The guy has got tremendous balance and he knows exactly where to go with the ball. They're going to have a tough day with this guy. The Citadel will also have a tough day offensively. Wofford is one of the top defenses in the country, and for the Bulldogs, it has to start with their quarterback, Ben Dupree. Ben Dupree, they run the triple option, folks, which you know what that is, okay? So he touches the ball first, and then he fakes it, and then he hands it off, or he keeps it. The most important thing he has to do today, I think, for this team to win, they have to come out throwing the ball in the beginning of the game, not when they're down 21 points. It'll be both Ben Dupree and potentially Aaron Miller. You're going to see two quarterbacks for the Citadel who may have to get that air attack going. Hopefully, as Paul put it, early in the game as opposed to later in the game. Here's what's at stake. Bulldogs trying to beat their third top 10 ranked opponent this year. They've never done that in school history. Wofford trying to not only win the league, but stay in contention for one of the top berths and seeds in the FCS playoffs. It is our SoCon game of the week. It is the eighth-ranked Terriers and the Bulldogs of the Citadel, one of the longer-running rivalries here in the Southern Conference, coming to you live from Spartanburg and the campus of Wofford. Citadel leads the all-time series, but it's a series that has been dominated by the Terriers. 13 straight wins for Wofford in this series. In fact, it is the only team, the Terriers, that Citadel head coach Kevin Higgins has never beaten while the top dog of the Bulldogs. We are underway. Bulldogs will start from the 25-yard line. Citadel coming off of a bye gave him a chance to get a little bit healthy after beating Western Carolina, snapping a three-game skid. And it's Ben Dupree who leads this offense, not the biggest guy in the world, 5'9", 185, but a perfect size to run the triple option. It is because it's hard to find. When you see him under the, under the center, when he goes down, he's very, very small. And the thing about it is it just drives linebackers crazy because they have to pinpoint where he is first. It's a 50 front for the Terriers, and the Bulldogs run straight ahead with their leading ball carrier, Darian Robinson. He is our impact player here, Paul, and the thing you love about him, he hasn't lost a yard this year. It's amazing when you look at guys, that, but off, off, you know, off of this 
formation that they have, they hand him the ball going straight downfield. So he really does, they don't flip to him at all. They just hand it to him straight ahead. So it's hard for him to lose any. But how many guys in this country run the ball as many times as he does and never lose a yard? It's big when you're talking about triple option too. You don't want to find yourself in second and third and long. Dupree wants to put it in the air on second down. Anderson is spun down behind the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Holt, the linebacker, makes the stop. But really, the guy who makes this defense tick is Mike Nime, a redshirt senior. Mike Nime is one of those guys. So what did the coach say to us? He said, don't let him go out and buy you a lottery ticket. That's right. This guy here has been hurt a lot. But he is one of the mainstays in their defense. This guy will hit you. He had led the team in, in, in tackles for a couple of years. When he's healthy, he's the best they have. Third down and six. Anderson went in motion. The question is, did the Citadel draw Wofford off or did the Terriers jump? We get our first look here at Larry Saunders. Offsides on the defense, number 56 with contact. Five yard penalty, still third down. Just keep that play in. Now, <laughs> I make sure you run that play four or five times. If they still don't have a first down. They got third and about a half a yard. I guess it goes without saying that you have to move the chains in any football game, but against the Terriers, a team that is so explosive offensively, Bulldogs really need to work this clock. Stay on the field as long as possible. They've got third and one after the penalty. There goes Ricky Anderson in motion. The sixth year senior Anderson has the first down and he crosses the 40 yard line in the process, a six yard run. You gotta like this play because what happens is Dupree in the offense, what they do, they put Anderson out to the outside and they run a toss. Look at Wofford, they're all stuck inside. They're all waiting for the, the, you know, they only have to pick up a half a yard. This toss worked beautifully for him. And if you looked at that second play in this drive right here, the second play of the game, Dupree went back to pass. Maybe, maybe they're going to throw. Trying to keep Wofford honest, maybe just a little bit. Yeah. All right, it's first down and up the middle. The Bulldogs plow ahead for nine more yards. Ricky Anderson once again. What a story Ricky Anderson is, huh? Bunch of leg injuries, ACLs, broken leg. Granted a sixth year of eligibility, not just six years, six years at the Citadel, Paul. But who would ever do that? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I went there for four years, and that was plenty. <laughs> the type of leader he is, though. They love him out there. He's the guy the rest of the team looks up to. And he's even cleared 1,000 yards in his career. Second down and short. They're going to put it in the air on second and short. And it's a completion good for a first down to the Wofford 38-yard line. Brandon Eakins has his first reception of the year. You know, you're, you're talking about it's the first reception of the year, but take a look at this. You got second down and another half yard, and it's another pass play. They're gonna they're not gonna play up tight on these on these wide receivers. And they're all it, when you look at Wofford, you look at their defense, they're sitting in the middle. They've got seven to eight guys in the middle at the line of scrimmage, and the other guys in the defensive second there, they're playing all all of these guys are playing man. Sixth play of the opening drive of the game here for the Bulldogs. Anderson again, third straight time. Anderson's had the ball in his hands, and it's another first down for Ricky Anderson inside of the 25. This offense is clicking on all cylinders here to start the game. Well, this this play here is, is just run perfectly, and if you take a look at Siano on the outside, number four, he's got to be outside. Number four, the linebacker, has to stay outside. He cannot let the running back get beyond him. Once he does that, it's an automatic eight or nine yards. They're moving the ball like this against one of the top defenses in the country. Wofford gives up 16 points a game and just over 310 yards a game. And Dupree wants to throw it again. Dupree's got an open man. Tom Jones, touchdown Citadel. You wanted them to throw it early and often? Well, they did. And Jones has a touchdown. And the Bulldogs are on the board. I just thought, you know, you're playing man to man. And Steven, Steven Shelton, Chel number two, was the guy that was covering downfield. And he can just, that, I mean, when you take a look at what, what they're doing downfield, Jones is wide open because he's got man coverage. I love the throw. I love the play. The quarterback put it in the perfect place. Just the second touchdown pass this season for Ben Dupree, the second touchdown pass of the year 
for the Bulldogs as a team. And it caps a 75 yard drive in seven plays. And the Bulldogs strike first up in Spartanburg. The Citadel has not beaten Wofford in 13 straight games. This is the type of start the Bulldogs were looking for. Marching down the Wofford defense for an early touchdown. The surprise team in the Southern Conference this year, the Citadel, who started out the season with wins over Georgia Southern and Appalachian State, now trying to beat their third top 10 ranked opponent of the season. And they start out the game with a seven play, 75 yard drive, which features three pass plays, all of them completions. You know, we talked about it right at the beginning, Darren. You know, it's something you have to do a little bit different. You just can't come out against this team that only gives up 16 points a game and say, okay, we're gonna run it down your throat. You're not gonna do that to this team. You gotta get them off guard a little bit. They did, they scored. Nice start for Kevin Higgins in his eighth season with the Citadel. And a kickoff into the wings is out of bounds after a touchdown drive of 75 yards. Now you give Wofford good field position because of that mistake. You don't give Wofford anything. <laughs> Ideally, no. <laughs> no. The ball will be placed at 35 yard line. First down, Wofford. So from the 35, the Terriers will begin with their first year starting quarterback, Brian Cass. Cass, who replaced a three year starter in Mitch Allen, has gotten better and better, according to Mike Ayers, as the weeks have progressed. And we came into the game thinking he was much more of a passing threat than Ben Dupree. They're going to fake Breitenstein on the opening play. That's a pretty good fake. He's one of the top ball carriers in the country. It creates a huge scene down the middle of the field, down to the 25 for Brian Yeoman. A 40-yard run for Yeoman. And don't you just don't you just love what they just did? Everybody's thinking Breitenstein's going to get the ball. They actually faked the ball to Breitenstein. And then Yeoman just takes off right straight up the middle. You know, you know we talk so much about Breitenstein and... and the running backs on this football team. Right off the bat, this is a very, very good offensive line. They've started together all season long with the exception of last game. By the way, that carry for Yeoman almost doubled his yardage total this year. He had 59 yards coming in. That was a 40-yard run. So they've got first down from the 24. Now they'll try Breitenstein, and Breitenstein is down behind the line of scrimmage thanks to James Riley. The Citadel has taken the red shirt off Riley. This is his first game this year for the freshman, and he stops Breitenstein, will officially at the line of scrimmage. Now Riley is going to be playing a linebacker spot, number 49, and to think about him is we know, we just know, that he's going to be looking at Breitenstein. Where Breitenstein goes, Riley's going to go. And it just it's not unusual that he makes the first tackle. So far, so good in taking the red shirt off the freshman out of Mobile, Alabama. Second down and nine officially with Cass changing the play. Cass keeps it here, pitches it out to Nosek, shaking a tackle at the 25 and getting about six or seven yards after the initial missed tackle. They just have a stable of backs that keep coming at you, even though they've taken some injuries at that position. Nosek is a guy here with his 11th carry of the year. 5'8", he weighs 195 pounds, but the one thing about Wofford, just if you look at these guys on film and you watch what they do, the Citadel, you cannot arm tackle these guys, none of them. The guys that are running the ball, the running backs, you have to put a lick on them. You have to hit them with a shoulder. Arm tackling won't get it done. Average 408 yards a game on the ground. This is no second again for a first down inside of the 10. After a 75-yard touchdown drive for the Bulldogs, the Terriers are coming right at the Citadel. That's a run of 10. You know, Darren, you talk about, we talked at the beginning about Breitenstein. And the thing about it is, you say, well, why aren't they giving him the ball? They don't have to. All they have to do is fake to him. I mean, he doesn't like it. And they're eventually, in this game, they're going to get it to him at least 20 times. But because of faking to him, it opens up the whole field. Here it is, Breitenstein up the middle, hop stepping his way towards the goal line, and he's in 12th touchdown of the year for Eric Breitenstein. You 
know the one thing about him when you talk about him, you hear everybody announcers coaches they talk about a guy that goes north and south that's all he knows that is all he knows you get him near the goal line and he's going to find it fifth time this year that Wofford has scored on their opening drive this time it answered 90 seconds the Citadels touchdown on the Bulldogs out. opening drive and they do it with Eric Breitenstein for Breitenstein, it's his 58th career touchdown. We are tied early in the first. He was the Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Year last year. He's on the Peyton Award watch list this year. Breitenstein averaging 160 yards a game. This is his 12th touchdown. It ties the game. Watch at the end of it. Watch him extend out to the goal line. That's awareness right there for the redshirt senior who is also our impact player today for good reason. You know, we talked to the coach and asked him about him. What makes him so special, Greg Stein? And he just said, well, he's very smart. And he's, you know, he's a very religious kid. And, and he, but he just works hard. And it shows, and you look at all the numbers that he puts up. That isn't by happenstance, folks. That's by having a great offensive line. Guys that, that know that when he has the ball behind him, either block for him, or get out of his way. <laughs> it's the only two choices you have. Breitenstein only had two carries, though, on that opening drive. The Citadel and then Wofford both came out doing different things than the scouting report would suggest. Wofford's scouting report says it's all Breitenstein. Citadel says it's run, run, run. Yet they threw three passes. The Citadel did. I don't, I, you know, Breitenstein and Wofford, they're going to go back to their basic stuff. And I, you know, with faking to Breitenstein, that's part of their deal because they got enough guys in that backfield to run with the football. The Citadel, you've got to continue to throw the football. If they're going to play Wofford, they play man-to-man -man coverage on your outside, throw it. Casey Redfern kicks off. Redfern will handle all kicking duties today for Wofford for the second straight week because Christian Reed who had been the team's place kicker for field goals and extra points. Well, Reed hurt his quad in a very mundane practice injury prior to the app game last week, and he's still not available. And just like the first kickoff, with the wind at his back, he boots it through the end zone, and the Citadel will again start at the 25. The kickoff team absolutely loves a guy <laughs> that kicks it out the end zone because they can go down and kind of slow up about 30. There's no reason to run down there and wear yourself out. Give yourself a little bit of a breather. Yeah, right. Opening drive touchdowns for both teams. Citadel had three passes, four rushes on their opening drive. And they go back to Darian Robinson here for a couple of yards on first down. The sophomore back, Darian Robinson, was a preseason All-Southern Conference selection. Boy, I tell you, this guy, if you, he hits a hole, and that's there, because once, once you get by the offense or the defensive line, you have really no one else to beat. The linebackers, I understand that they play a 3-4 here, or a, a 50 defense. But I guarantee you, if you get Darren Robinson past the defensive line, he's gone. When the Bulldogs love to break one. This is a guy who has the ability to do it, but not when Tarek Odom basically comes through unblocked to grab the ankles of Ben Dupree. Odom, the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week for his game last week at Appalachian State. Now, I don't know if this was supposed to be a pass or not, but I know it was a high snap. Going back to the outside, when you see Dupree, he really had no place to go and no place to pitch. If he pitches it, it's a three-yard three loss more than they already have. And that guy right there, number 99 on him, nice play. Got some quicks to him, also had a 40-yard touchdown return of a fumble. Helped seal the win last week up in Boone. Third down and eight. See what the Bulldogs have done on third down this season. Dupree with a little bit of a crease that closes quickly. The redshirt sophomore, Travis Thomas. That's how you draw up a defensive scheme against the option. You know, Darren, that's absolutely perfect what you just said. Because watch what happens when Dupree comes out. There's no place for him to go outside, so he now has to cut back into the defense. And once he does, the defense makes the tackle. And that was Travis Thomas, number 21, that made the play. But once you turn in, now you've got all the black shirts waiting on you. 
Here's Cass Cooey back to punt, one of the best punters in the Southern Conference. Kevin Higgins in the Citadel truly believes that Cooey has a shot at the next level. Although it's a low snap, he's still able to get it off. And he's going to get a roll out of it, too. Citadel thought it was touched. Gamble did, but it was not. So Wofford will start at the 37-yard line. You know, if Gamble saw that one correctly, that ball still had a couple more yards of roll left to it. <laughs> Nonetheless, pretty good break for the Citadel. After a low snap, Wofford will start. Darren Goldwater and Paul McGuire here at Wofford. You see Drake Michelson, and Paul, you were pointing out while we were away, Gamble did the right thing here. He thought Michelson touched this punt. I, I, I totally agree with you. You know, it could have rolled a little bit further, but look at here. What do you see Michelson right there? It looks like he kicks the ball. From that angle, he does. So what you do is be safe, pick it up. Wofford's first drive started from the 35. That was a five-play touchdown drive. Now they start from the 37. Giving an offense that averages 464 yards a game, good field position. As Breitenstein runs right through Julian Baxter, the safety who is coming up in run support. He picks up nine on the run. The difference between Breitenstein and other backs that I've seen in college, watch him explode. Once he gets through the hole, now watch, he's going to dip and explode and picks up another three yards. You just, I mean, if you're going to tackle this guy, you better put your arms around him. His legs, you don't <laughs> let him drag you because he's going to take you another four yards. Breitenstein had the touchdown on Wofford's opening possession. They're going to put it on the air. Second down and short, and they got the completion to the Bulldogs' 45-yard line. That's good to Jeff Ashley. Ninth reception of the year, which leads the Terriers' team. You know, both of these teams have thrown the ball on second and short. And here's Wofford. They come out second and short. Jeff Ashley, number 88. It's a perfect pass from Cass. I mean, that gets the defense thinking. Uh, I can't just jam the line of scrimmage on second and short because they're going to throw the ball. Spent a lot of time this week talking about whether the teams will throw the football or not. Both of them have come out at least showing the pass. There's Breitenstein again, picking his way through the line. Almost five yards for Breitenstein when there really wasn't a whole lot there. <laughs> but when you watch him run, when he thinks, when he knows he's going to get hit, he turns his body. He doesn't take the full blow. He just turns his body and he picks up another two yards, actually running sideways. It's tough for a big guy to turn his body and still make himself small. So we've got second and six after that run. Cass keeps this one himself, and James Riley, the inside linebacker, the freshman, makes his second stop of the game. Shy of the sticks, it'll be third down and one. I tell you, it's got to be frustrating for the quarterback, Cass, to come out, and he knows he's got an option. And the guy he has the option to is Breitenstein. I mean, um, if I keep it and I pick up the first down, that's good. But if I toss it, I know he's going to get it. <laughs> so you really have a dilemma as you're coming out as a quarterback. You better have some room to keep it. Cass is going to give it to Harden, who slipped an arm tackle that enables him to pick up the first down, down close to the Bulldogs' 30. Paul, the Citadel has had trouble slowing opponents' rushing games this year. they got to wrap up a little bit better. Yeah, they do. And, you know, you're looking at, you know, arm tackling and thing, and I'll, and I'll keep bringing it up during the game when I see it, but you've got to really stick these guys. You've got to shoulder these guys in order to bring them down. They're just too big to wrap your arms around them. And they keep coming at you with fresh legs. Cass gets dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's Mitchell Jeter, the freshman at a Rock Hill High School in South Carolina. Jeter stops him for a loss of about three. Well, you know, Jeter, it isn't like in practice he doesn't see this play. He just goes for the quarterback. His guy is the quarterback. Breitenstein is not getting the ball. I'll get the quarterback. He does. To me, you know, when you look at the Citadel, they're starting three different guys that really hadn't played that much this year and are doing very well. Kevin Higgins told us that Jeter really had a great week of practice. He was expecting him to play a lot today. Cass keeps this one on an option with a big seam for Cass. An ankle tackle just inside of the 25-yard line prevents what probably could have been a first down run. It's a run of nine for Cass. 
you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of throwing the football because you, you do so many pro games and then you do you know, teams with, that don't run the ball like these two teams do. Remember, these two teams are in the top four in the nation rushing the football. So it's not by happenstance that they're running the football and they, they, they just play so well with their offensive line. Third down and three. This time it is Breitenstein who spins his way for a first down into the red zone. Give the tackle to Carson Smith, the only starting linebacker that the Bulldogs have left because of the injuries to Carl Robinson and Rahm Muhammad. Well, let me tell you something. Gregory, number 75, who is a left guard, he pulls it, goes right up in the hole. This was outstanding blocking by the lineman. Not only did he block straight ahead very well, but they also pull well. First and 10, back to Breitenstein. Using the blocking of Tymeco Gregory, like you mentioned, Paul, the left guard pulling around a little bit to the right. You know, this offensive line, as they match up to the Bulldogs' defensive line here, it's a line that really has the ability to move the Bulldogs' defensive line around a little bit. And the thing you said earlier about this offensive line, too, that here's, here's the difference in, in weight uh, with the two lines, like 25 pounds. Well, you talked about this earlier. These guys have played together all year long, except for one game. And they are so used to each other, they know what each other is going to do, and so do the backs. Second down, up the middle. Touchdown, Wofford. It's Will Gay. First career touchdown for the freshman at a TL Hanna High School. That's right here in Spartanburg. Hern Anderson. We, we may have a lot of firsts today. <laughs> Trust me. But look at he fakes the three different guys, cast does one, two, and then he hands the ball to Gay up the middle. I mean, you know, you, there's just so many people that you can watch. You've got a guy that's on, on Breitenstein, but there was nobody that accounted for Gay. One of the reasons Wofford is so hard to stop, it's not just that this scheme has been in place under Mike Ayers for seemingly forever. I mean, he is in his 25th year here with Wofford but they keep running in fresh legs. We're not even a quarter in. Six different guys have carried the ball. That was Gay's first carry, and it results in his first touchdown. And the only thing they have Gay listed as is a punt returner. I mean, he's really not listed as one of the running backs. Wofford with the 14-7 lead after the Citadel scored first, and it's a Terrier team that had a huge win last week. Went up to Appalachian State. One in Boone for the first time since 2002. Breitenstein, of course, had a big game. But that was huge for the Terriers because just the week before, they had lost at Georgia Southern. So the win at Appalachian State keeps them around the top of the standings. And now the Terriers just need to keep on winning. Mike Ayers told us, in fact, Kevin Higgins, both coaches told us, that this is a championship game. They have to have that mentality for the rest of the year. And the one thing, too, that the Citadel has to worry about in this game, when, you, when you're looking at all those positives that you're talking about for Wofford, is the fact that on their defense, they are really thin everywhere. And we know they, do, they lost a lot of linebackers, but they're thin in other positions. They're just trying people to see if they can help. Redfern has put two through the back of the end zone. Make it three. Gonna put a hole in those bushes in the back. <laughs> it's been almost the same exact spot, all three, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Let's see if the Citadel can find the success of their opening drive here on their third possession. They went three and out on their second possession. And they're going to come with their backup quarterback. Tough to really call him a backup, though, Aaron Miller. He's played in every game, and Kevin Higgins tries to ride the hot hand a little bit. He's probably the better passer of the two between Miller and Dupree. Miller pitches oh. it out to Jones. What a big hit, and the ball is loose. It looks like the Citadel got it. Was that Travis Thomas, number 21? I mean, this is this is one heck of a play by the the outside linebacker. Oh no, that was a corner. I'm sorry, that was a corner that came in and made the play. You talk about a smack. Take a look at this shot here. That's Shelton number two that makes the play. He was almost in line for the pitch. 
And it was Alex Glover, the sophomore tight end, who recovered it for the Citadel, avoiding disaster. Still second down and 13. Miller gets a couple past the original line of scrimmage. So five for Aaron Miller, and the Citadel is in the position they don't want to be in here, third and long. And the difference in this is now you got Siena, number four, on the outside, the left linebacker on that side, and Odom, the defensive end. They're responsible for the outside. So now if the Citadel comes out in that uh, sweep that they, they're running, all they do is seal it, so they have to go back into the inside. And when Aaron Miller goes back to the inside, he's got two linebackers and a tackle to, to beat, which he's not going to. Four wide receivers for Aaron Miller and the Bulldogs, third down and eight. Here comes Thomas off the edge. There's the completion, a slipped tackle, and a first down for the Bulldogs. You know, this is a, just an outstanding play to the outside. What you're doing is you're finally hitting the swing back coming out of the backfield. And when you do that, what you have on him is a linebacker. And a linebacker should, has to make that tackle in, in open space, which he didn't do. Nearing the end of the first quarter as the Bulldogs try and continue this drive. Match the Terriers two scores. And it's up to the 42 to end the first quarter. That's Sean Middleton, who is the running back, but. <laughs> Sean Middleton, who's listed as number 20, <laughs> yeah. went over it very carefully. Any number changes? No, no, not at all. He's wearing 34. It's a nice run. It's a one touchdown lead for the Terriers, though, through a quarter. Oh, what a great day for football here. Southern Conference action. We move to the second quarter. With the Citadel moving the football here on their third possession. It's the first possession for Aaron Miller. Miller who came in as a replacement for Ben Dupree. They kind of split time at quarterback. And Miller gets very close and may even have a first down for the Bulldogs. It's a run of four. I just want to say something before we went to the end of the quarter. And we have Sean Middleton. We have him as number 20. That's what he's been wearing all year long. They changed it to 34. We had, and he's not even on the roster. We're not apologizing. We're just trying to tell you the reason we made the mistake was because we didn't have that jersey listed anywhere. But we do now. We're good to go now. Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> Kevin Higgins is good to go now, too. He wanted to make sure that that was a first down. The ball was clearly spotted ahead of the... 46 although the chains did not move that's what Kevin was asking for he gets his way Bulldogs had a 75 yard drive on their opening possession to take the lead but they haven't been able to stop Wofford the Terriers have scored on their first two possessions for this 14-7 score Van Dyke Jones and now the reverse here's a former quarterback Matt Thompson to throw and we've got contact and flags. It'll be pass interference on the Terriers. They had Kendall Bratcher there in coverage. And really, what's Bratcher supposed to do on the ball that's so badly underthrown? Well, here's where you have to talk and communicate, defensive backs. When the ball is in the air, first of all, the ball pass is underthrown. All he defense, had to do, because he doesn't touch that's anybody, but all he has spot. to do is Bratcher Automatic is first his head. If he turns his head, his body's going to go with his head, and it'd be in a great play because the ball was underthrown. Watch what happens out here. This ball is going to be underthrown. Now you, you've got a guy, he may be a quarterback in high school, but take a look at I mean, you're going all the way back across the field. Look how short this ball is. And what happens is you cannot block Anderson from getting to the ball. And what Bratcher did, all he has to do, if, if one of these guys, if his own teammates, right there, just hollers at him, Wiley, number three, turn. There's no pass interference. As it stands, it's 15-yard penalty, though, for the fifth-year senior, Bratcher. Bulldogs are inside of the Terriers, 40. Sixth play of this drive. Miller pulls it, pitches it out to Van Dyke Jones. Zotto comes up from the safety spot to make the hit. <laughs> Zotto makes the hit. You want to see a guy come to a screeching halt? <laughs> Van Dyke Jones, watch this. You want to talk about hitting the wall? Here's the pitch, and here comes, bam, the hit. 
Yeah. You know that hurts. That hurts. I've never been hit like that. Thankfully. I don't want to ever be hit like that again. Ever. Bulldogs picked up five on that first down play. They come with the trap back to Van Dyke Jones. He's tripped up by the nose tackle, EJ Speller, number 97. Three more yards for Van Dyke Jones. Okay, Darren, make the call. What would you do? You got third and two. And probably two plays to pick up this first down, right? If you're the Citadel? Why not? I mean, I, you know, field goal does not do you any good. I don't think. Two for three on third downs today. Darian Robinson was the fullback, and he ended up as a lead blocker there for Aaron Miller. It looked to me that Darian Robinson may have even got a head start on that snap. Well, Aaron Miller is just going to take this ball and just a quick step back and let it let the center do his job, which is Sellers number 50, and then step up into the hole. You don't need to do a yard and a half. But they what they did is they put a back in motion, and he looks like he would have been the, the, the pitch guy. They just kept the ball and went up the middle. Citadel driving for the tying score here early on in the second quarter. Ninth play of this drive. Miller keeps it. Odom wraps him. Maybe a yard on first down. There is a play where Aaron Miller, Miller, when he looks at this film tomorrow or when they look at it, this is one you should have tossed because the toss man was open and he had no chance to pick up anything. He got a yard, but just take a look to his backside. Look at here when he goes down the line, all he has to do now is toss, but he cuts back up in to all the traffic. And who's there? Odom. Second and nine for the Citadel. Now he tosses it out to Ricky Anderson. Not a lot of space out there. And then he's flipped over. Blake Wiley, the senior out of Fort Mill, got right into his knees and flips over Ricky Anderson. Now see, there's a difference of arm tackling or going at the knees and hitting a guy. Wiley, number three, is going to come up. He's coming back from the outside. Look at this. Underneath. That's how to tackle. Third-year starter. He has started every game for the past three years, Blake Wiley. His stop brings up third down and five. The longest drive of the game for either team. This is about to be the 11th play. Shotgun. They got a hustle. Four on the play clock. All right, Miller able to handle the snap, but he's under pressure and has to throw it away. You know, that's a third high snap that they've had to the quarterback. Uh, two of them went to Dupree and one to Miller. But, you know, it just breaks up the play. Once you do this, now everybody's out of sync. He's going to the outside. The rush is on. He does a great job of just getting the ball out and not taking a loss. So it'll be Thomas Warren who will line up here from 40. Really solidified the Bulldogs kicking game. He's a senior out of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. And Warren hooks it. Just the fourth miss of the year for Warren. May have jinxed him a little bit, but it was his leg that helped the Citadel to one of their top 10 wins this year when he connected with less than a minute to Media go to beat timeout. Georgia Southern. Can't capitalize on the lengthy drive. Bulldogs down by seven. Touchdown lead for Mike Ayers and the Terriers. Hoping not only for a Southern Conference championship this year, but as Eric Breitenstein puts it, not only the playoffs, a deep run into the playoffs. A national championship. You know, playoffs are, that's great. That looks good for your program. I think we're one of four or five schools that's been um, four times in the past five years. And, you know, that's awesome, but I'm tired of losing in the playoffs, especially when we know we can win. Um, we just not played well in our in the losses uh, the past two years. So I'm ready to go a little further. I want to I want to get a national championship and a big ring. <laughs> Lost at Northern Iowa last year. <laughs> really a tough way to lose. Also, Stefan Shelton and a play that really made national highlight real plays. Flipped the ball up into the end zone thinking that it was a touchback. It wasn't. It helped Northern Iowa win that game. Meanwhile, here, James Riley has just made his third big play of the first half. 
And if you're just joining us, Riley is the guy who was supposed to be redshirted. This is the first game he's played this year. And he's made two really good plays so far. So I bet they're glad that they didn't redshirt him and now he's playing. But you, you go down the line, that just shows speed and awareness of where the, where the quarterback is. Bulldogs are so thin at linebacker. They lost their, really their best two, Robinson and Muhammad, to injuries. Akeem Garnett makes the stop up at the 29 yard line. After the run there for no second, eight yards. You know what, when you look at this Wofford team and all you really hear about for me, and I'm, and I'm reading all the articles, it's all about Breitenstein, Breitenstein. These guys have some backup people that are absolutely outstanding. Yeoman number 12, Husek number uh, 39. These guys, I mean, if you're gonna key on Breitenstein, these guys are gonna run crazy. Terriers are perfect on third down today. This is third and three. Cass doesn't have any room and Cass goes down. The corner, Brandon McClady up in run support, drops him at the 29. You know, Brandon McClady is, is coming off of a block. He's being blocked at the time. And then the quarterback, Cass, just runs right into him. Watch this. Here goes Cass. You've got to see him. And he's right there. Great play by the defense. Kevin Higgins told us it'll be important that his corners tackle well. That's a big play from McClady. First time Wofford punts today. And the Citadel forced him to do it on a three and out. Fair catch called for and made by Greg Adams. And the Citadel will have its best starting field position across their own 35. Bulldogs defense forces a three and out here on the Terriers, perfectly executing the defense against the option. Down by seven with 8.40 to go in the half. All in. All right. Don't eat here? Yes. Baba, give me three jelly cheese on the line. The beacon. It's one of the places that when you come to Spartanburg, you have to go to the Beacon. It's co-owned by a Wofford and a Citadel grad. So this game, every time it's played in Wofford since 88, has been termed the Beacon Ice Tea Bowl. Well, they said the next time you win there, they're going to weigh you on the way out. You're going to weigh about 10 <laughs> pounds more. Here comes Dalton Trevino. Came back from injury in the Bulldogs' last game and had a big game. And has a big gain here into Wofford territory. 13 yards for Dalton Trevino. I'll tell you, they're getting an outstanding block at the line of scrimmage. Number 50 is the center, Mike Sellers. Watch him. He'll release, and once he releases, he gets back downfield, and you see him, you don't see him in that frame, but he throws another block on one of the linebackers that springs this thing. I mean, that just shows you the speed and agility of the center. Former fullback in high school, he was also a state champ wrestler, Sellers. Miller and a slow developing play pitches it to Dupree. Both quarterbacks are out there together. They're going to gain yards on a slow developing, awkward looking play. Two yards to be exact. Now there's a guy you send to get a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> watch this. This toss, watch it. It'll bounce right back up to him. Bink, bink. I mean, that, that's easy. Yeah, easy. Look easy. <laughs> I mean, that play wasn't designed that way, but it looked easy. Dupree, who is the game's starting quarterback, still in this game, near side receiver. He's the one who goes in motion, but it's up the middle to Darian Robinson. CNO hit him first. Eventually wrapped the ankles to slow up Darian Robinson, who averages 88 yards a game. You know, you look at Dupree as a quarterback and they put him out here on the flank and then they put him back in motion. I mean, he's the second leading rusher on this football team. So, I mean, he is a running back slash quarterback, I think, because he runs with the ball a lot more than he throws it. Third and four for the Bulldogs. See what they've done today so far. Miller reads it well and dives for what he needs, which is the 39, and it looks like they're going to give him that spot. He slipped right by Alvin Ciano. And we've got a Terrier who is slow to get up as well. Alan Smith will limp off under his own power.
How about this, Paul? That's the 10th first down in this first half for the Citadel. And that's that's one of the things that they need to do is just control the ball, control the clock, and wear these guys down. Last drive ended in a missed field goal. Three yards in a cloud of dust here. The Citadel's going to be fine with that, aren't they? They are. You know, and the thing about it is that, that this team, Wofford, on defense, they only give up, as you said earlier, 16 points a game. That's it. Wofford also only gives up about 100 yards a game on the ground, ninth best in the country. The Citadel is knocking on the door of 100 right now. They've got 97 yards on the ground here in the first half. Now throw it. Second down and seven. Paul's calling the plays. It's bobbled and dropped by Terrence Martin. Very close to a forward pass. It or was a backward forward pass, pass, I should say. It was a forward pass. It yeah. was a forward pass, yes. That, the official was right on top of it. One thing you got to do, young man, is when they throw you the ball, you got to catch it first. Then you can run with it. See, that's part of the game. You look at the ball, <laughs> which you did do. You got to look at the ball, catch the ball, and then run with it. Martin didn't do either. Another third down try for the Bulldogs. This one third down and seven. Another long drive for him, too. This will be the seventh play of this drive. Four-man rush for the Terriers. Odom forces Miller out of the pocket, who fires one, which is tipped incomplete. That is a heck of a play at the back line. Mike Nyam, the middle linebacker, all the way back around the five-yard line to prevent that big strike. You, know, you talk about Nyam is a, is a great hitter, and he's been hurt quite a bit, and he is their best linebacker when he's healthy. But you watch him. Watch him close on this ball. That's number 45. He's a linebacker, folks, covering downfield. That's just a sensational play. Bulldogs are going to go for it on fourth down and seven. Nine of 18 on the year for the Citadel on fourth down tries. Miller throws back behind Matt Thompson. Running the slant. Thompson wasn't looking for that. But first of all, do you know how hard this is to throw this ball for an ex I mean, for a pro quarterback? Take a look at what you're asking Miller to do. You're asking him to run to his left and turn his body, which he has to do, in order to deliver the ball back to his right. Watch, he's running left, now he has to turn. He, first of all, he has nothing on the ball, nothing at all, and the receiver wasn't even aware that it was coming. Even if he was, McCrimmon had the underneath coverage. If that ball's thrown in front of Thompson, it goes right to McCrimmon. Exactly. Bulldogs' last two drives, missed field goal, turnover on downs. Here's Flowers, the freshman back, out close to the 40. And it's Chris Billingsley, the Citadel defensive end, who's got the stop. Now you talk about small people in the game. Flowers is 5'8", 170. When I was born, I weighed 170. We were very poor. I had to go to work right away. Must have been a tough birth. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's pregnant right now. I, I, she's hoping that our daughter's not going to be 170 pounds. <laughs> I bet she is. <laughs> Second and six, they go to the outside. It's Yeoman who picks up the first down. So that Gene Pierre, the Bulldogs' starting corner, the Richard Jr. out of Florida with the stop. You know, Darren, they have so many options. They really do. And it all starts with, with uh, Breitenstein because they fake to him. When they do that, it just holds the middle linebackers. They're not getting to the outside. And then the toss is there. I mean, you just, there are too many people to cover with speed. This is the fourth possession for the Terriers. Scored touchdowns on their first two, went three and out the last time they touched. Again with Flowers, he has stood up. Man, Carson Smith, the linebacker, just met him, stopped him after four. This is what the linebackers have to do. You've got your four down linemen, and the linebackers really have to fill the holes, make sure that they get to the gaps, and let the, you know, let the defensive lineman take on the offensive lineman, but where there is a gap, you have to fill it. Here's Breitenstein spinning off tackles. 
He is virtually impossible to bring down on the first hit. It's a 15-yard run for Eric Breitenstein. Only his seventh carry of the first half. The Citadel, we knew if they were going to do this. They had five defensive linemen in the game. They figured they could stop Breitenstein with them. If you look along the line of scrimmage, you'll see five defensive linemen down. On the top side, there's another one. Now watch what happens. They just kick him out, and Breitenstein goes right up the middle. They don't fool with, with, with the four-man or five-man rush. They just pick him apart right in the middle and send Breitenstein up the middle. Now Flowers comes, streaking across, and lost the football. The Citadel's got it. They're going to say he was down, however, Paul. Well, if he's got the ball and he's hit, and when he hits the ground, the ball comes out, he's got possession. I'd like to get another look at it, and here's our chance to do just that. All right, here comes Flowers. I'll watch. Down, yeah. Good call. That's, a, that's an excellent call by the official. The ball is in his arm. It wasn't popping out when he got hit. When he hit the ground, then the ball popped out. And from our angle, McClady comes in, hits him, and as he's flipping, his body kind of covering up the ball. Wofford keeps the possession second down and five here. Two men were in motion at the same time, <laughs> so Wofford's going to back up. You know, I swear to, I swear to I tell you this, if, if I've seen it done in practice. The first time I've seen it do it in the game. These two guys almost collided. You've got two <laughs> offensive backs running at each other. I can assure you that this play was not called, and it wasn't designed to do this. They lined up. They both came. One was supposed to come in motion, not Illegal two. shift on the offense. Two backs moving in the backfield at the same time. That's a five-yard penalty. Second down. And he also used to say, at each other, <laughs> which would have been a one heck of a collision. <laughs> Terriers who average 40 points a game, which is fifth best in the country. Inside of the Citadel 35. Trying to tack on to their lead late in the half. Keep in mind they'll also get the ball to begin the second half. Two seconds on the play clock, so Mike Ayers will take a timeout. Time Wofford, their first charge timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. This becomes a big drive. If the Terriers can convert, balloon the lead out to two touchdowns here, and then potentially stop the Citadel, which is what they've done in the last two drives for the Citadel. It gives them a little breathing room. And it does, be, and because <clears throat> Wofford would get the ball in the second half, and that's gonna, gonna help them. You know, the Citadel can't get 21 points down, and then start. they decide, well, we're gonna try to throw the football. That isn't what they do. They run the football. I like the first series of downs. They threw it three times in that drive, went 75 yards and scored. Now that sent Wofford back a little bit, but they've been away from that. And they're throwing, they've thrown two or three gadgets. Two of them didn't work, one did. One did on a pass interference. Citadel has had chances too. Missed a field goal, turned it over on downs in Wofford territory. But it's the Terriers who have kind of been in this spot before, eighth ranked team in the country, pursuing a league championship and a top seed in the playoffs. Cass pulls it, sidesteps one. Cass is inside of the 20 where Sadat Jean Pierre finally takes him down. Tackle 18 there for Cass. Boy, I'll tell you, if Jean Pierre gets blocked, it's a touchdown for Cass. Watch the move. They, they all faked it. We faked everybody out, and everybody went to right side, and then Cass just kept the ball. That was just an excellent play by the quarterback. All individual play. Second best team in the red zone in the Southern Conference. They're back there. And they go with Breitenstein, who's hits and leans forward. He picked up two or three extra yards after the hit just by leaning forward with his hand. Yeah, what I would do with Breitenstein, they're covering, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're looking for him to go up the middle or just off tackle. I'd throw the ball to him. <laughs> I know they've only thrown to him twice this year, but I'd throw him the ball. 
Second down and eight. Or hand it to him. Yeah, or hand it to him because he can <laughs> work his way down close to a first down. That, that was, Darren, that was my other option. Or <laughs> Good option. Either throw him the ball or just give him the ball. Yeah. One way or the other. Boy, is he aware of uh, people at his feet? I mean, he, he just made a little step over move. This is four down territory. This is not field goal range. 57 yards for Breitenstein now in the first half. Third down and one. Yeah, why not? Breitenstein will pick up the first down. It'll set up first down and goal. They're really riding him on this possession more than they have on any of their previous three. Well, the biggest problem that they're having, the Citadel is having with Breitenstein now, he's, you know, he's just picking the yard. He's not he's getting close to 60. Is that, is that he already has two or three before they make contact on him. And, and when you're in a third and one situation, you've got to be in the backfield with him. You can't wait for him and catch him after he's through the hole. 62% is their touchdown percentage in the red zone. And they're going to go to Breitenstein. That's the reason why they're so effective in the red zone. Second touchdown today for Eric Breitenstein. Paul, he won't complain about getting two or three yards a clip. He's a team first type of guy. If it takes two or three to then open up a hole, so be. Well, and the thing about him is, if, is if, when you watch him run, you look at his feet. Forget about the other parts of him. He is so aware of where he is and where the defense is when he's oh, running. Say. He just he just glides. I mean, this is a, a big man. Not height-wise, he's only like 5'11", but he weighs two and a quarter. And he's got 13 touchdowns on the season now. He can make himself small, too. Less than a minute to go in the first half. Well, Mike Harris has said every game from now on is a championship-type game to keep in the Southern Conference title hunt. As we look ahead to next week, it's another championship-style game. Don't forget, it's the Mountaineers of Appalachian State and Georgia Southern in a critical SoCon matchup, which is coming up next week. Those two have combined to win at least a share of the last eight SOCON championships. First time he didn't put one out of the back of the end zone, but he was kicking into the wind. And with less than 60 seconds left in the half, and the ball is fumbled. Oh, Wofford recovers this football after the split kick. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta find out first of all, was he down? when he was flipped over. Did he have control of the ball or was he losing the ball while he was in midair? The ruling on the field is the return man was not down. Waffle recovered a fumble, first down. All right, let's take a look at it, guys. It's going to be, does he have the ball? Erickson, look at, take, take a look at when he gets hit. That angle doesn't show us that, that whether he gets hit. Harry, right, here's a shot here. Now, does he have control of the ball? No, it's out. It's definitely out. See, there's a thing that the officials saw. It is an outstanding call because the ball was out before he hit the ground. Good call. Looked like it was Nick Crocker, number 20, who punched it free of Bay Amron. And that's not the guy that Citadel wants taking kickoffs either. That's where they're starting defensive end. Well, he's a, he actually was a blocker. <laughs> the ball came to him, and you got you to get it because these guys are coming down on you. Big opportunity here for Wofford. Two touchdown lead. They get the ball to start the second half. And they're going to throw on first down. Find pocket for Cash, which then breaks down. Guess who? James Riley yet again. James Riley has football savvy. He's a linebacker, folks. And just remember, he drops back in coverage first. Then he sees the quarterback has no place to go. Then he rushes the quarterback. Make sure he gets himself under control and makes the tackle for a sack. Cass is going to throw again. He's got three receivers to play with, and he finds Will Irwin that looks to be shy of a first down. He needs the 27. He got 13 yards there. Darren, look what look what the offensive line does timeout on this play. Wofford. Watch the Third opening. Second charge, timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Watch Cass. Now watch what he has to look at. Look at the middle of the field. There's nobody there. He just has a chance to look over. The offensive line spread out. They opened a hole for him, and he threw the ball. Didn't get the first down. 
but it was just great job by the offensive line. Wofford with a quick timeout to stop the clock prior to this third down play. We remind you again, next telecast next week, we've got Georgia Southern and Appalachian State. Both teams are very honest about it being one of their biggest games of the year in a why not always competing for the Southern Conference Championship. It is Georgia Southern and Appalachian State exclusively on WatchESPN.com or your Watch ESPN app. Saturday, 2 o'clock, a week from today, live from Statesboro. Seventeen seconds left in the half. Here's third and two. And it's Breitenstein who will pick up the first down, stopping the clock momentarily. It's a well-oiled machine, how quickly they got to the line to spike it. They only lost, well, they ticked off four seconds. Felt like it was a little quicker than that. Well, you know, it's one of the things you see when they're trying to spike the ball at the same time is that the quarterback goes up and it should be, as soon as he touches, it should be just between the quarterback and the center. When he touches the center, the center should snap the ball. That would save two seconds. But they, they bark out signals. You don't have to. Keep in mind, Wofford does have a timeout, so they can use the middle of the field. Four-man rush for the Citadel, cast to the end zone, and Gene Pierre had it knocked away. Cast Jeff Ashley, the intended target, became the defensive back. Ashley. That was heads-up play by, by uh, Ash, Ashley because number 88, Gene Pierre has got the interception all the way. Instead of waiting on the ball, Gene Pierre, you've got to go up and get what you did there. Nice play by Ashley. Nice play by Gene Pierre. Redfern will kick. Remember, Christian Reed out with a quad. It's a 42-yard attempt for Redfern. And Redfern has it tipped and still has enough left to get it through from 42 <laughs> yards away. Yeah, that's about how the end of the half went for the Terriers. Recover a fumble on the kickoff and score 10 late points here in the first half. A touchdown from Breitenstein, then the field goal from Redfern. Ballooning their lead. Darren, this shows you really how strong his leg is because the ball is tipped. And we heard that thing all the way up here. And he still makes the field goal. Dom Jones, who's got two field goal blocks this year. But nonetheless, Redfern knocks it on through. It's a 24-7 Wofford lead as we go to the half. The Terriers trying to win 14 in a row against the Citadel. Both teams trying to stay in the race for the Southern Conference. And in the race for the FCS playoffs, we go to our ESPN studios at the break. The Terriers, after scoring 24 unanswered points to end the first half after the Citadel took the opening drive of the game into the end zone, it'll be the Terriers who start the second half on offense. And, you know, Paul, something that we've talked a lot about certainly is Breitenstein. We've talked a little bit about the balance of this offense today for Wofford. The Citadel is without two linebackers. We've touched on it. Rama Hamid is not there. Carl Robinson is not there. And it makes the task of stopping one of the nation's best offenses, the nation's best rushing offense by far, it makes the task of stopping them that much harder. But James Riley, number 49, has stepped up very well. We saw him. Uh, they make two excellent plays and also they've got a defensive lineman Jeter number 62 that is starting today. They just need to get these people upfield. So from the 25 Terriers begin with Brian Cass and Carson Smith wraps up Brian Cass. Smith is the only starting linebacker that is left for the Citadel because Muhammad and Robinson are injured. Let's get a look at the guys who are not here. Oye Gunle, you want to try that name yourself, Paul? Oye oh, Gunle. That's right. He is not here. He injured the groin. His career is done. Muhammad, Robinson, both of them lost for the year. And that is why we have seen James Riley step up today, blow a red shirt, and play very well. Cass 
gets hit as he pitches this one out to Yeoman, who finds the corner. Yeoman has the first down. Austin Boyle with the stop. One of the Boyle twins is in Austin. He's got the stop at the 45. Let me tell you about Yeoman on this play, folks. This is a great play by Yeoman. First of all, catching the ball. Watch where the ball is thrown. Look at this. He waits on it. He catches the ball. Now, watch the moves. He's aware of where everyone's at. He's aware of where his blockers are, and he goes downfield and picks up 15 yards. That's beautiful. Yeoman had a 41-yarder in the first quarter. He's got over 60 yards in the game. They're going to come back here with Yeoman. Three more for him. Yeoman, the ball carrier. Stopped by number 45, Brandon McClady. Okay. Right, Stein, your turn. Yeah. Hasn't touched it. <laughs> well, well, okay. This is what the coach says instead of calling the plays. Give it to Brighton Stein. Flashes the signs. Yeah, just, well, sign number, you, know, you don't have to deceive seven. it at all. Number seven. Give it to seven. Second oh, down. No, and they six. did it again. They both went in motion again. Without a flat. They'll reset, and here's your man, Eric Breitenstein, who patiently waits for the middle of that line to chunk up some yardage behind Gregory Singleton and White, guard center and guard. It'll bring up third and two. You know, Darren, it really is a, a, a nice way to put it about this guy. He's patient, the way you just said it. The guy really is, Breitenstein. He is just a patient runner. There's nothing quick, no sudden moves by this guy. He knows that he's got great blockers in front of him. He knows that all he has to do is be patient, wait, things will open up. Mike Ayers. Timeout, Wofford. Their first charge timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. You saw the confusion a couple of plays ago when both guys went in motion at the same time, and then Ayers elects to take this timeout here on third down and two as Wofford really tries to find some separation here from the Citadel early on in the second half. Remember, Wofford lost when they played at Georgia Southern. They come back, they beat Appalachian State. A win over the Citadel today really keeps them in contention at the top of the league. Same story, a similar story for the Citadel. The Bulldogs shocked the league at the beginning of the year. They beat Georgia Southern. They rolled over Appalachian State. I mean, that opened some eyes. Winning three straight, then losing three straight. They lost their mojo a little bit, but still alive in the Southern Conference race for the championship. They haven't won it since 92, but they've got to win today. And if they want to make the playoffs, Paul, you think they have to win out. I think they have to win all four games, which includes this game here. It is a task ahead. But you take a look at Wofford. Their last two games against Sanford and Chattanooga. But their final game of the season is South Carolina. And if South Carolina is in for a, a major bid, I mean, that's going to be a, a tough game for Wofford. So Wofford has to win this game and the next two, and then they're in. Breitenstein has the first down. It's Riley who wraps the waist. You know, Wofford, you point out that South Carolina game. Wofford gave South Carolina a scare in Columbia a few years ago. Well, the thing about South Carolina is that they don't face teams that run this kind of offense. And it really, I mean, it really screws you up on defensive day because you've got to, you've got to not waste time, but you've got to spend your whole entire time going up against an offense that you don't, you don't see regularly. And that's hard to do. And it's not just the average triple option offense. Ayers has been here for 25 years. This is a well-oiled machine. They've got guys who wait their turn, and as they wait their turn, they get a couple of carries throughout the year. I mean, they never seem to be young. That's what Kevin Higgins said to us this week. Wofford never seems to be young. It's never as though even when they get nicked up a little bit, like today they're without Donovan Johnson, one of their top halfbacks. You wouldn't know it. They're running the ball very well. Everybody seems to take part in the party you know they they do they you know it, it isn't uh, you're going to get bright and sign three or four plays in a row and then bang right back they're going to give you somebody else i mean they just they do things that i i just really enjoy what i can't wait for them to do in this game is your favorite guy who is mine is a tight end Hart. throw him the ball now this year he's only caught three passes and three for touchdowns Last year he caught two and two for touchdowns. <laughs> so I think I would give it, I'd throw the ball to him. 
Nice play there by Billingsley, standing up Eric Breitenstein, stopping him shy of a first down on what was third down and two. Only senior on that Bulldogs defensive front. Here's Breitenstein. Now, that's Billingsley making the play. What the Citadel has now, they have five defensive linemen in the game, two linebackers, and they're trying to offset that offensive line. Big play. Fourth down and two. It is Breitenstein who's hit, and he spins forward. This is going to be pretty close. Riley is the one who hit him. You know, Breitenstein doesn't get hit that hard that often either. No, and I'll tell you what, Riley unloaded. <laughs> Check him. I said this guy is in the right place. He, they, we talk about a red shirt freshman. He is a red shirt. They wanted to red shirt him. You know what? What they're saying is now, why in the heck did we start this guy earlier this year? Watch Riley step in. Bam! That's a hit. That's what I'm talking about. Putting your face in there and hitting the guy. That's the first time that we've seen a, a Wofford running back stopped in his tracks. What a big stop it was. Wofford cannot add to its lead. Here's the Citadel's first possession of the second half. And it's going to start with Dupree keeping it around the left side. And Dupree is going to have close to a handful. The offense clicked in their first drive, Paul, 75 yards and a touchdown. A passing touchdown, nonetheless, on their first drive. But 65 yards on their last three drives of the first half. So they got bogged down. Yeah, that's, that, that's the thing that really hurts a, a, a team that's struggling. That's, you know... Wofford is a better football team. I, think, I don't think there's any question about that. But when you're on a drive like you were talking about there, and you've got to put it away. Go, go, go. Robinson jumps over the line. Nyam is the one who falls on his back. It'll be close for Darian Robinson, who needed the 48. You know, by running the ball this many times and the way the clock runs, you don't have that time to run all those plays. <laughs> you, you know, you only have a certain amount. You look at teams like when you look at pro teams say, hey, they ran 80 plays. Not here. They give Robinson the first down. And they're going to go back to the air with Dupree. Oh, look at that hole for Ben Dupree. He eludes McCrimmon and picks up the first down. The inside of the Wofford 45, that much space for maybe the shiftiest player on the Citadel's team. That's going to be dangerous every day. See what's nice about this play? Now, this is off of a pass play that you and I have been talking about. You're going back and throw the football. Look at this whole thing open up for him. He looks downfield, they're covered. I see an opening to the outside. Take it, take the 13 yards, and then get out of bounds and don't get whacked. I, like, I just really like the play. It's a pass play, but it turns into a run play. Dupree was under center for the first two drives. Then it was Aaron Miller, who was the Citadel quarterback, to close out the half. Now they're moving it again with Dupree in a big hole for Darian Robinson, who's off to the races. Touchdown, Citadel. 44 yards for Robinson. It all started with James, James Riley's hit on Breitenstein, too. It did. Got the ball. The fourth down, they stopped him. They got the ball back. And, and the neat part about it, we said this way back in the first quarter, you get Darian Robinson to the second level. To the linebackers, he's gone. And that's exactly what happened. The linebackers didn't step up. He saw the hole. The blocking was perfect in the line. And he got a touchdown 44 yards later. It's Thomas Warren who tacks on the extra point for the Bulldogs. It snaps a Terriers 24-0 run. The touchdown run from the junior out of McKeesport High School in Pennsylvania. Just a little bit of a crease at the first level and Robinson off to the races. Five touchdowns this year for Mr. Robinson. And we've got a 10-point game. Complexion of this game certainly changed over the last couple of minutes. Wofford got it first to start the half, stopped turning it over on downs, and a few plays later, Robinson busts off a 44-yard touchdown run. A lot of Citadel fans here in the Greenville-Spartanburg area. Hoping to see a Citadel win. They haven't beaten Wofford in 13 years. 
And if they can do it today, it'll be the first time ever that the Citadel has beaten three top 10 teams in a single year. But Citadel, the Citadel holds the edge, right? They've beaten them overall twice as many times. Overall, yes. Yeah. Strange. A wind must really be blowing. Every kickoff that has come this way has been down for a touchback. SoCon Players of the Week. We get a look at the current ones. One of them is playing in this game. Tarek Odom is the SoCon Defensive Player of the Week. He had a 40-yard fumble return for a touchdown. That was a big play in the Appalachian State game. And we also had Wilson throw for five touchdowns. That's a career high. And Mitchell had a big day. That was in our SoCon Game of the Week. Last week, Paul was at home. Doug Chapman was here with us. Paul was absolutely tuned into every play of this one as Wilson found Millett for three touchdowns, part of his five touchdown day. Paul, when you throw for 400 yards, you should be the player of the week, don't you think? Yeah, and they should give you a car. <laughs> yeah, they like to do that for college <laughs> athletes, you know, give them free cars. They're big on that these days. Oh, really? Yeah, big. Mitchell, of course, was the freshman of the week. <laughs> First down run for Flowers. That nets him six. Not a new car, just, you know. A toy car. Yeah. Okay. Something to get around in. Uh, help me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give you a car when you were recruited, right? Said they were, but I didn't get it. <laughs> Derek Goldwater and Paul McGuire were with you here from Spartanburg for the Bulldogs and the Terriers. And this turned into a very, very good game. Here's a pitch Whoa. out to Harden, who's thrown out of bounds by Riley. I tell you, you want to know who the freshman of the week in the conference is going to be this week? It's going to be James Riley. <laughs> James Riley, I mean, you talk about a guy covering space. Remember now, he hit a bright side in the hole, stopped on the fourth down play, and then how he's in the middle, he ends up on the left-hand side, throwing the, the runner out of bounds. I mean, this guy is all over the place. An 18-year-old making his first college appearance. They're going to redshirt him. Not anymore. <laughs> Short yard to go on third down. Breitenstein this time will pick up the first down, making himself small, turning Eric perpendicular, Bryson I guess, to the line of scrimmage, slipping through Billingsley for the first down. I like that expression, making himself small. I've been looking at myself in the mirror. I'd like to make myself small. What's the plan? Well, diet. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> First year starter Brian Cass, junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, directing this offense, trying to find an answer to the Citadel's touchdown run, and he's got Harden for a chunk of yards around the outside. Five more for the redshirt freshman Harden. You know, this is one of those those plays that they've been running all day long. Is that when you fake the ball to Breitenstein. When you fake the ball, it just holds the linebacker just that split second. And then Cass makes that quick toss to the outside to Harden, and the guy picks up five yards. This is an easy five because everybody's concentrating on number seven, and you should. Citadel is one of the least penalized teams in the country. This is going to be their first of the day, assuming they were not drawn off. T.J. White, Prior number 61. Snap, false start, offense, number 61. Five-yard penalty, second down. Look at him. He's just saying, what am I doing? What am I doing? I, I missed the play count. You got to get the you got to get the number, man. That negates the first down run. <laughs> Very balanced in terms of the number of guys who have touched the ball today. Paul, what you alluded to, everyone keys on Breitenstein, so spread the love a little bit. Straight drop for Cass, and it is out of the reach of his freshman back, Will Gay, and it brings up third down and 10. See, this is where they get and they get in their problems is now they get third and long. This is this is a team that, that needs to be third and five or better. Then you, then you have all of the different backs that you can give the ball to, including Brett Sight. But now when you're in third to 10, that almost forces you to throw the ball. 47% is best in the conference, and they are going to throw it, and it is complete. What a catch for Ashley, who breaks away from Jean Pierre to get into Citadel territory. 
the one thing as a defensive back that you must do, and Jean Pierre did not do this, is you've got to make sure that you keep the receiver in front of you. So if he does catch it, you make the tackle. You're going for the ball. Once you went, he went for the ball, then Ashley just beats him and picks up another seven yards. So they convert third down and 10. They work down to the Citadel 43. Trying to build on this 10 point lead and there's another big hit for McClady. The corner McClady really has come up nicely in run support all day today. This time he knocks down Flowers. We just asked, we asked Higgins in, in a conference call with him about the corners. That means that your corners are really gonna have to fill well. And McClady is the guy that's been doing it. It's the third time he's done this. He said, our corners have to come up and force the play to the inside. McClady has done that. One of the captains on the defensive side of the ball, McClady is. Haven't seen Wofford do this much today. Line up, get the play. They have to hustle with four on the play clock. Then they have somebody leave early. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty, still second down. It's a very un wofford like drive. A couple of false start penalties here. This one on the senior right tackle, Jake Miles. <laughs> you know, I love when a guy who shakes his head and he points at somebody else. What do you, what do you, no, it's you. See, they call, not only did they call your number, they're going to have to start calling your name so you understand it was you. Second down and 15. They're going to get back what they lost on the penalty here with a run of five. Will Gay once again. Converted third and ten moments ago to move the chains. Everyone in the stadium knew that they were throwing. They did. Ashley picked up that plenty more. Now they're looking at third and a very long ten. The five down look for the Bulldogs again. They also blitz Cass, and it is dropped. A big hit from Carson Smith also intended target was Will Irwin. Well, Will Irwin just got hammered. Uh, you know, this was a great play by the defense. Because Will Irwin really doesn't have a chance to make a good grip on the ball. Watch, he gets his hands on it right there, and then he gets whacked. You gotta, you gotta just wrap the ball up. And when you have a linebacker like Carson Smith nailing you. Yeah, but Wofford's going for it. If it wasn't a quick kick, they would have gone for it. Cass with a very good one, cornering the Citadel down inside of the 10 yard line. So they line up to go for it. That way the Citadel, even though they did have someone back a deep safety just in case. They're able to pin him inside of the 10, but it's the Bulldogs with a little bit of momentum right now. Not only in Spartanburg for the Citadel and Wofford today in what is a very competitive now second half, Spartanburg is also the home to the Southern Conference office, so it makes it very easy for Commissioner John I. Marino to join us up here in the booth right now. Thanks for taking out the time. It's been a great game so far. It has been, and uh, the momentum has clearly shifted here. Citadel has got something going. John, this league this year, as competitive as I remember it, I've been associated with the league now eight or nine years, but you're talking about teams at the bottom like Elon and Western that are pushing the teams at the top of the league right now. No question. I mean, here we are. I think there's three weeks to go in the season, and we've got five teams still in the hunt to, to win the championship. Ben Dupree, who directed a touchdown drive the last time, he's got Dominic Jones coming across the formation. Jones, who had a touchdown reception on the first drive, picks up 17 here. John, but we're watching the center. We're, they're Dominic doing something Jones. now that we've been wanting them to do all game, and that's throw the football because they can. You know, Dupree, it went in the first quarter on that first drive, he, he was three for three. It's, it's, if you just can't line up against a team like Wofford to just decide, hey, I'm going to run the football at you, you they're not going to allow you to do that. No, and, and uh, they've had receivers open, and as you said, Paul, they've had some success in the air. 
So are you putting in for travel time from the <laughs> office here? I just want to know in case. <laughs> well, you, you can. Yeah, you know, that dollar twenty will come <laughs> in handy. <laughs> you, know. you don't have any tolls one to go down. through. No, 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 one red light, light. that's <laughs> it. You did come through maybe a couple of tolls. You just came from Asheville. We had the basketball meetings up in Asheville. A lot of good things going on with basketball. We'll touch on a couple of them. First, though, big news around the league is coming out of Charleston, the College of Charleston, whether they will go or stay. What is the latest update on the College of Charleston? Well, we uh, we know what's been uh, in the newspaper, and that is that uh, the board has given the uh, the president the authority to talk to the Colonial Athletic Association, uh, but the board still has to approve uh, whatever the the outcome of the negotiations are. We've got third down coming up here for the Citadel. How long is that process going to take? Is there any idea? Well, it's it's already dragged on for about seven months, which obviously is is a bit of an irritation to some of our folks, but. I think the next scheduled meeting of the board at uh, Charleston is in January, but it could be sooner than that. Is there a deadline? I don't know that there is. There has to be a practical deadline, at which point you can't do schedules for right. next year. So I think we're coming up on that. Third down and three. Dupree had a seam. Elects to try and get to the outside. It's Mike Nyam, the senior, who did not take him down, Paul. His knee never went down. The play continues. And Dupree inside of the Wofford 40. And that's a situation, Darren, where a, where a linebacker like Nyam does, what he does is he grabs him. He doesn't put him to the ground. Watch. Dupree does a great job here. He knows he's not on the ground. He lands on Nyam. He doesn't touch the ground. This is an outstanding call by the officials. The officials today have been outstanding. Two close calls on a potential fumble. They were right on it. And then right there, Dupree's knee very close to going down. Certainly wasn't down. And they go back to Robinson, who had the touchdown run on the last possession. All right, John, so now from a basketball standpoint as well, a bunch of games are going to be televised this year, uh, a lot of them ESPN 3, some of them uh, ESPN, ESPN 2. But we've got quite the slate of basketball games that are coming up on uh, on our SOCOM package here on ESPN 3 as well. Yeah, there, no question, Darren. I think we're just under 50 games uh, in total that are going to be televised, and many of them on ESPN 3 like we are today. Uh, they're playing basketball in two weeks. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Basketball <laughs> season starting already. It is. Five of the of the uh, uh, games uh, will be double headers. Five of the events are going to be double headers. We will have two games the same day: women's game and then a men's game. And we're going to be doing just about all the games uh, out of the uh, men's basketball tournament this year in Asheville. So we're excited about that. You're going to keep me pretty busy in Asheville. <laughs> Four, four games a day for three straight days. It'll be fun, though. We'll have an oxygen tank there for you, Darren. <laughs> Thank you. And some soda. <laughs> that would be good. A little bit of caffeine. Third down and four for the Citadel. Out in space, Vinny Miller, who needs the 30. He's got the first down, and the Bulldogs move the chains. Boy, Vinny Miller on that, on that play, Darren, and, and John, he, what he did is he knew how far he had to get. He knew that he had to break it back a little bit back to the outside. And this is what he does on the play. He's, he knows that he's got to get inside the 30-yard line, which he did. It just heads up play by a runner. Paul, as a, as a former linebacker, I would think this would have been a game you would have loved to play in. All kinds of smash mouth football, a lot of running. Well, but when I played, we didn't have anybody with speed. We did kind of slow motion stuff. <laughs> We've seen a lot of guys with speed out here today. We've seen some big plays, including the 44 yard touchdown run on the Bulldogs' last possession. Now they have Trevino out in space until Zotto, the free safety, closes on that one pretty quickly. John, you've had a, you've had a, a being here, you've been able to see right inside. Uh, it's very impressive. We, I'm looking at him, the young man. We talk about awareness on the field, about what you're doing. And I, I just think that this kid is, is special. And I, I got to believe that somewhere in one of these teams in, in, in the NFL, he's going to the next level. You have to think that he's going to get a chance. He, you know, he's going. To, somebody's going to take a flyer on him. He's got great vision. And, and the most impressive thing to me is he, he's a great kid. I've talked to him uh, individually. John Dupree's got a ton of space. 
passing play broke down. Dupree trying to get to the outside is tripped up by Wiley. First and goal for the Bulldogs, who amazingly are in the red zone today for the first time, despite the fact that they've already got 14 points. One thing that Walford did, but they left it on the fourth down play and didn't make the, make the play when Riley made the stop. They allowed the Citadel to get back into the football game. And then you take a, a guy like Dupree. Dupree, before he's a passer, he's a runner. Oh, yeah. He's not a passer. He's a, you know, he can throw the ball, but he would rather run with it. And that he does very well. Walford nearly jumped. There is no flag on the play. Dupree and Mike Sellers move the pile down close to the five as the quarter comes to a close. John, we're going to let you go here and let you enjoy this fourth quarter and what has become a very competitive game. Bulldogs knocking on the door and making this a one possession game here. It should be it should be a great finish and uh, I've enjoyed my time with you. John, we always appreciate your time. I'm sure we will talk to you down the road. Commissioner of the Southern Conference, John I. Marino. Ten point game as we move to the fourth. We have Paul McGuire, I'm Darren Goldwater. This Citadel comeback attempt started with their defense, but the offense is doing its part. Here's the 11th play of a drive, second down and goal, and they come with Van Dyke Jones. Jones stays on his feet. It's a touchdown for the Citadel. I'll tell you, this was one terrific individual effort by Van Dyke Jones. I mean, I, I looked at this thing thinking this is going to be a loss, or at least maybe just get back to the line of scrimmage. But just staying with it, keeping his balance, and going towards the end zone. Great play. In the third quarter, the Bulldogs defense shut down Wofford. They stopped him, a turnover on downs on Wofford's first possession, then had a 44-yard touchdown run. In Wofford's ensuing possession, they force a punt, starting the single drive timeout. inside of their own 10. They cap an 11-play drive with this Van Dyke Jones Athletic touchdown, and we've got a three-point game in the fourth quarter. Fourteen straight points for the Citadel. Six seconds now into the fourth quarter. It's a three-point game as the Bulldogs try and snap a 13-game losing streak to the Terriers and stay in the race for the Southern Conference Championship. And what an impressive drive it was, Paul. 91 yards. You know, and, and one of the things that's nice about the Citadel when it drives, they're trying to throw the ball, but, you know, they didn't have a, a chance to throw. So Dupree just took off and ran with it because he found that everybody else was covered and, and the field was open. I like that. Short kickoff here from Austin Jordan. Flowers picks his way to the 25, had a brief seam. And he's down shy of the 30. Let's see if this Wofford offense now can get in gear. We talked a lot about the Citadel's defense. They're down a couple of linebackers for a defensive unit that hasn't been able to stop the run all year. They're one of the five worst in the country stopping the run. Yet they've shut Wofford down here in the second half. Do we see Breitenstein a little more here? I think this is where the offensive line coach said to the Wofford football team, let me tell you something, we're putting this game on your shoulders. Now you guys have got to do what you've been doing all year long. you got to get these guys off the line of scrimmage. Which they, which they haven't been doing in the last two quarters. They fake it to Breitenstein and go around the edge to no set. There's another good tackle from McClady with a flag coming in, too. And this is against Wofford. This is holding. And you know what? I, you know, they're discussing whether they should take the penalty. Take the penalty. I don't think there's any decision here. Just take the penalty. Put it back. Holding on the offense, number 17. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second, first down. They took it. Let's get another look at where the hold occurred. It's going to be on the outside by what by the wide receiver and you know you, you you can make contact with the guy but you can't grab his shirt that's a no-no they don't like that how about mcclady i mean he just seals off that edge for this citadel defense first down and 20 here for the terriers there's a little bit of breitenstein and breitenstein gets to the third level where julian baxter trips him up so you lose 10 with holding you get 15 of them back 
And I said, when it, when, what happens, the offensive line coach just puts it on the offensive line. Look at Gregory, 75, 62, Singleton, and 61, White. Right in the middle. Look at the blocking. Those guys open up the hole. And when they do, Brightenstein just picks up 15. Might have been the first time that Riley's missed a tackle. Riley was staring right at Brightenstein when he got through that line. Sidestepped him. Now Yeoman's hitting the backfield. He's going to lose yards. It'll be third down and long. Boy, this is mean, the best way in the world to stop the option play or the dive play is penetration by the defensive line. Watch the penetration. Bang, there's just no place to go. And when Yeoman's turns, they got defensive linemen in their face. Douglas, number 91. These guys, when they shoot the hole, there's no place to go. Third down and six. Terriers need the 39. They're going to throw for it, and it's off the fingertips of Brian Yeoman. Baxter was in coverage right behind Yeoman. And the Wofford offense off the field. Third time the Wofford offense has been stopped by this Citadel defense, this maligned rushing defense here in the second half. And they're stopping the runner play. They, they gave up, this uh, Brighton side, they gave up 15 yards. It was first and 20. But then they shut them down. This defense has come to play. Oh, man, everybody's offside. This is quietly a story in the game, too. Citadel has not yet been penalized, but Wofford has shot themselves in the foot a couple of times. Well, this is on a punt. Prior to the snap, the, false start, offense. They have the wind at their back, so it, it is going to hurt them that much. But the, but the problem is they're all out of sync. I mean, this is the third motion penalty that we've seen. And it's really not like Wofford to do this. Not at all. Dom Jones came straight up the middle. He's blocked a few punts this year. Tricky one for Adams with that win, pushing it even farther back. Citadel is going to start at the 28-yard line. Their defense has become the story here in the second half. Their offense has been able to capitalize, but it's been the defense. Douglas and Billingsley, the veterans on the defensive line, force this Wofford punt. Already beaten two top 10 teams this year, but it has been a slow go for the Citadel moving from a spread attack, which is what Kevin Higgins knows best, to this option. It started now three years ago, and this is Kevin talking about the progression of the triple option. When we put the triple option in, I remember Fisher DeBerry stopping into my office and saying, Kevin, this is going to be real ugly year one, and year one was very ugly. Ball was on the ground quite a bit. Year two, we ended up being a lot more successful. Uh, guys had a much better understanding of the system, kept the ball off the ground, uh, ended up being the third rushing, ranked rushing team in the country this past year. And uh, we are really excited to get our third year going. Get it going, they certainly have. They've protected the football well. And now we've got a flag in here right around the tackle. Roseboro may have had a bit of the back of the shoulder pads, maybe a little bit of the horse collar in it. It, it looked like he had the shirt. Now, I agree with you. I wonder what they've seen down there. Picking it up. No. There's no foul on the play. The defender grasped the collar. It was not a horse collar foul. Second down. Here's another look at it. Yeah, it looked like more shirt than collar to me. I mean, you got to drag him down by the by the shoulder pads. Here it comes to the outside. Now watch. What does he grab? He grabs his shirt. It pulls the shirt off. He let go. He had his right hand on on the uh, shoulder pads, then let go. Good call. Miller, the motion man, and it's Vinny Miller who takes the pitch and gets a block from Van Dyke Jones. We have seen some hits today. This one's Kendall Bratcher who lays the lumber. Now, this is what you call filling. We've seen the signal corners doing that. Just take a look at Bratcher. Watch him fill. Go down. That's called filling. Wofford's defense is a very good unit. 
top 20 in the country. Points per game total and rushing defense. They need a big stop here to grab the momentum back from the Citadel. Dupree will throw, and Jones makes the catch, but he made it shy of the first down. Then Dupree's he needed the 38, three, and he's going to be Jones. about a yard short. And I'll tell you what I, I do. Because you're back into the ball game, you got 20, you're only down by three. To go for it on fourth down and give off with the ball in, the, in this territory, to me, is a mistake. Your defense has done a job, a really good job. But don't put their backs against the wall. I just think that you, you kick the ball away and let your guys play defense. Obviously, he's not listening. That's why you're up here, Paul. Yeah, that's true. They need a yard. Fourth down for the Citadel, but will they even snap it is the question. Let's call a timeout. Yep. Timeout, Citadel. Their first charge timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. I wonder if he changes his mind now. Was he trying to just draw them off sides? Well, I don't think so because Dupree wasn't sure. But the thing that happened, if you take, if you, when you take a look at what was happening, that between the, the center and the guard was wide open for Dupree to just step to his left, and he could have picked up the first down easily. Keep in mind, Higgins has one of the best punters in the league. Cooey averages 44 yards a kick, a potential NFL punter, but he is punting into the wind if they do elect to kick. And just remember the last time he went to punt, he dropped the ball because the ball was a bad snap. It's true. Now, they've had some, some problems with the snaps to the quarterback when he's been in the shotgun. Now, I, I, just, I just feel that you've got 11 minutes to go. Your defense is playing well. Don't give Wofford the opportunity in great field position. Sticking with it, they're going for it. I tell you what, it's got to, to me, it's got to be a quarterback sneak. They only need a yard. Dupree runs into Robinson and bobbles the ball. Where's the spot and who has the ball? Well, they have to get the ball to the 38 yard line. And if it's on the 38 yard line, it's a first down. Get out of the way so we can see it. Yeah. Please. Slowly peeling away here. It should be a first down. What a lucky break for the Citadel. They have a timeout to draw up a play, talk about what they're going to do. Robinson and Dupree run into each other, lose the handle of the ball, and still, we're going to measure, but still may have the first down. They have the ball, the first down by half the ball. That's the only thing in my body that hasn't gone. My eyes. Everything else is just. You better be right here after that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't worry. I'm telling you, it's first down. I do agree with you. Oh, the whole ball. Uh, maybe my eyes are good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell the difference between half and the whole football? That's right. <laughs> but I think it's very big, you know. Huge conversion for the Citadel. And a lucky one. Well, he almost dropped the snap. Dupree almost dropped the snap. And watch him go back and get it. He dropped, and again, he fumbled the ball. But you can see the ball is already across the 38-yard line. Citadel has scored on both of its drives in this half. A little bit more miscommunication there. This time Van Dyke Jones is going to pick up a couple of yards. An offense that really was rolling in their last two possessions suddenly on the last two plays seems a little bit out of whack. You know, this gives you an idea of how much work that they put into this triple option, Darren, because, you know, everything is so quick, so fast, that a quarterback's got to make a decision now. Do I give it to him? Do I take it out? Do I, and I, do I pitch it? I mean, there's a lot of decisions that are put on Ben Dupree, number two, the quarterback, and he's got to make the right ones. Second down and eight. Dupree thought better about pitching it. Stephon Shelton held his ground, makes the stop. At best, it's a gain of one. Nice play by the senior out of Atlanta, Stephon Shelton. Well, if he pitched it, this ball to Van Dyke Jones, if he pitches this ball, Van Dyke Jones is going to be in for a loss. They're there. You could just see that Shelton was sitting there waiting on Van Dyke Jones to get the ball. He would have made the play. Then he got himself back to the inside. If you went for it on fourth down back further, 
and it becomes fourth and a little bit longer. Do you go for it again? Is that in their minds now? Are they thinking two plays here to pick up the seven yards? They've been good on third down today. Dupree will sprint out and make the throw, which oh, is dropped. dropped. Thompson was hit by Wiley as the ball got to him. And you got to punt this one now. It's third and seven, or fourth and seven. Boy, I mean, he's wide open. Thompson is right there. All you have to do is catch them all. I mean, this is a very, very good play. It looks like a rollout that are going to run. And look at Thompson. He is wide open on the sidelines and just drops the football. But I still don't, I don't think he had the first down. Exactly where I was going. He, he wouldn't have. He would have been a yard, yard and a half short, and it would have been another decision. Meanwhile, the Citadel here, who just took a timeout, the last fourth down try, now the play clock's down to four in a tight game. And they didn't get this one off either. They didn't take the timeout, though. Kevin Higgins. Delay a game on the offense, number 36. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Kevin Higgins elects to keep that timeout in his back pocket. I like that when you know when they don't call a timeout and they take the penalty and the coach goes, you know, that's good because I'm really not going to admit that I <laughs> made a mistake. But you didn't. Remember now the wind is in Cooey's face. Wofford will set up a return. It is not one of Cooey's better efforts. Fair catch though for Nosek. Wofford will begin from the 27 yard line. An offense that has been shut down by the Citadel defense in the second half has an opportunity because of this defensive stop to make it a two possession game here in the fourth quarter. timeout. First and 10, Wofford at the 27. Fun times here at Spartanburg. We've got a great game for you on our SOCON game of the week. Wofford's offense has been bogged down. It averages 40 points a game. A little different, though, than those quick shots that we saw. We'll flash them up here again here in, in a second. A couple of yards for Breitenstein. So this is the offense that Mr. McGuire here played. And look, look at the young Paul McGuire there. He's looking good. Yes. Fire how, how come you didn't catch that ball on the bottom? You look at those skinny legs and hands. I caught it. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. That's a heck of a catch. I, it, once it, when I saw it before it hit the ground, I go 15 yards and caught it. That's because you were good. That's because I was just lying. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Breitenstein out in space. That's the first time they've tried that today, and it didn't work at all. He lost a yard. Riley was in on the stop again. I don't think, you know, I, I got to believe that this is not the play that's called. Uh, because. I mean, if you're going to run this guy, you run him straight up. You don't run him wide. Watch this play. It just looks like a whole lot of indecision to me. And then he's, he's worried about, he's talking about face mask. There was no face mask. No, there wasn't. No. A little frustration, maybe. It was the arm of James Riley. That was pushing that helmet up. Third down and six. And they're going to give it to Breitenstein, who breaks the tackle, but and there's a flag. Out. It would have been a first down, but we've got a flag back at the third. We're going to have holding on Wofford. Here's the call of what will be the eighth Terrier penalty today. Holding on the offense, number 61. 10 yard penalty, it's third down. It's TJ White. Here's another Numbers, look. Yeah, that number 61 is right in the middle of your screen, and he's got his arm around Douglas. And you know the thing about it is, he doesn't have to hold him because Douglas has already made his commitment to the outside, and all he had to do was just turn him because Breitstein was already through the hole. Terriers, because of that, looking at third down and 17. This offense hasn't scored in this half. At one point in the game, they had a 24-0 run to go up 24-7. Brighton Stein on 
a very safe call on third and long gets four. Remember a guy talking to us last night? We were at a restaurant and he said, What do you get when you have third and 15 or more? What do you do? You had the ball off to the guy right up the middle. And you started laughing. They just did that, but they didn't make it. Here are boys. The complexion of this game has changed. The Citadel defense really has stepped up here in the second half. That is one heck of a punt from Redfern. Flipping the field a little bit on the Bulldogs, who will start just across their own 20-yard line. Both teams trying to stay in contention for the Southern Conference Championship. Citadel trying to snap a 13-game skid to the Terriers. Offensive coordinator Bob Bodine puts this Bulldogs offense back out across the 20-yard line. They'll start with less than seven minutes to go. The Citadel had the opening score in the game. They were up 7-0, gave up 24 unanswered points. But the second half has flipped the script a little bit. Now the Bulldogs driving for either the tie or the go-ahead score here in the fourth. Dupree's been the quarterback virtually all half, and man, does he take another lick. That's Stephon Shelton. Again, a high snap. I mean, I, you know, I know they're sitting in the shotgun formation. We've got Odom is down number 99 for Walford, the defensive end. But as soon as you hit the, the you center of the ball high and the quarterback has to break his rhythm to go get the ball, it just throws the, the whole play out of whack. It's the first year we heard Kevin Higgins talk about the progression of the option. What is new for the Citadel this year is that op is the the shotgun. That's one of the new things that they have put into the offense this year as they feel like it is moving far enough ahead that they can put that play in. And now we're obviously deep in the year, so it should be a little smoother than it has been today. Yeah, well, it, and, and the whole thing comes down, you know, when you, when you look at what the problem is, it's the center getting the ball back to, to the quarterback. Now, the quarterback is only 5'9". So you don't have a really big target back there, but you've got to get the ball back where he can start maneuvering early. Second and 11 for Dupree and company. Pitches out in front of Trevino. Oh, this is a big hit from Bradshaw. Trevino wasn't down. Second time we've seen today. I don't know how you get up from that hit anyway. And now he'll take his time to get up here. Oh, it's a five-yard run. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what. And, and the pain is going to be excruciating. Watch this hit. Baggy turns back to the inside and bam, he's down. But he's not on the ground. He's still on the defensive back and he gets up. I'm going to tell you that. That is a great play by Trevino. A great play. Because look at the awareness. He's not on the ground. And the officials are right on top of this. The unfortunate thing, Paul, Trevino missed three games this year because of a bad knee. I don't think it was the hit that hurt him on this play. Roseboro, after the hit, dragged him down and just happened to catch that leg underneath. After the wicked hit, here's what happens to the leg. Right, this is after after he gets back up oh, and he gets it pinned underneath him. Boy, was that, a, was that an outstanding run, though? I mean, that's twice we've seen. How many times do you see that in a game? This has been the best hitting game we have seen in our SOCON games of the week. And it's this, not even close. This is the best hitting game I've seen working with you. You need to. We should do it more often. <laughs> 37 for the Citadel. Straight drop back for Dupree, who takes a hit as he gets rid of it. They need the 31. Did Thompson get enough? It'll be close. No, he's a yard short. short. Yeah, he's a yard short. How about this Wofford defense now, Paul? Citadel went right down on two straight drives to get back to within three, but on the last two possessions, the defense has made it tough on the Bulldogs, who are keeping the offense out here on fourth down. Well, and if they went for it before with five minutes and 30 and counting, they're going to go again. And I, you know, the middle is open. You take a look at, at Spiller, it's over 90, 97. He's in the middle. But look at the gap between the two guards. That's where you go with it. 
Dogs need a yard. They'll go up the middle and get the yard. Right over right guard this time. Jim Knowles, the red shirt junior, paves the way for the first down run. I don't understand. I don't understand the defense on a short yardage. On the short yardage, you got to take every gap. Take a look. Look at the split splits that they have. I mean, all you have to do is once you hand the ball off, the running back, which happened to be Robinson, bang, he's there. It's it's first down easy. Citadel driving for the tying or go-ahead score against the team they haven't beaten since the late 90s. Here comes Roseboro forcing Dupree to throw it away. I'll tell you, these defense fans are tired. <laughs> Roseboro looking at the clock. That thing isn't moving. That's when you look and see that thing didn't move. Really? I'm tired. That thing didn't move. Remember this Wofford defense. We've talked about Citadel being down a couple linebackers. So is the Wofford defense. Big reserve. Kevin Thomas isn't available. Neither is Philip LeGrand, the starter at the outside backer. The Odom is back in number 99. Option and a pitch out into space to Ricky Anderson. It's the safety Zotto who comes up to make the play. Four yards for Anderson and another big third down coming. You know, Darren, one of the things that we've been watching in this football game for almost four quarters now is the pursuit and the drive of the safeties and corners. They have really come to play on both of these football teams. They're committing themselves and they're making the tackle. Citadel is 7 of 12 on third down today. That's way better than what they've done this season. Third down, they were 33% coming into this game. Clock nears four minutes. And the Citadel had movement. Van Dyke Jones, who went in motion. I don't think he ever came set out there before moving forward. Prior to the snap, fall start, offense, number 32. Five-yard penalty is third down. Yeah, it was Van Dyke Jones who came across the formation to the bottom of your screen and went darting straight forward before that snap. Now it's third and 11, but Paul, this is two tries to pick up this first down, assuming you can get some yards. You still have plenty of time in the Citadel. They have, uh, all, they have all of their time. No, they have two timeouts. Blitz in nine. Dupree keeps the play alive and throws a dangerous pass. Shelton was there in coverage. Let me tell you something. Was this a, I'll tell you, an outstanding defensive call? Because what they did is they sent Nyam, the linebacker. They ran a blitz on third and long. Watch Nyam, number 45. He delayed blitzes, and now you have to get out. Dupree has to run. He has no place to go. He's going to try a little pop shot. That isn't going to work. I'm going to tell you something. That was a great call on defense. Don't let them get comfortable. Force the quarterback to make a move. Wofford's defense has really manned up on the last two possessions for the Citadel. And because of it, they're going to get the ball back with the three-point lead. And they'll start at their own 22 and a half. The punt for Cooey into the wind of 46 yards. Breitenstein, who has 108 yards this game, will probably be counted on on this drive. You have to imagine. It's been an un-Breitenstein-like game with 108 yards. And please don't toss it to him. Let him go the shortest distance between two points. <laughs> That's straight at everything. You've got a big offensive line in front of you. Your guards are 293 and 305, and the center's 309. Go at him. Here's Breitenstein on first down, and he can't move the pile. I say that, but he still picks up two yards. Been a very different second half from first half. Citadel called a timeout. Look at the difference, Paul. Citadel outgaining Wofford right now. 200 yards in the second half. They've got 17 more yards timeout. overall. Citadel, their second charge timeout. 30-second yes. timeout. Citadel has one timeout left. You can take all of those numbers. Darren right there. 
It's the next three minutes and 29 seconds is going to count. Kevin Higgins has never beaten Wofford. He is 0-7 against the Terriers, now in his eighth year with the Citadel. He says history doesn't matter. He tells his Correct. kids. The timeout is on the Citadel. Citadel has one timeout remaining. He didn't have to correct himself. That's what he said the last time. Yeah. You know, some people say they'll look at this game and say, you know what, Wofford's flat. Well, let me tell you what. The Citadel's up. I mean, they were taking it to Wofford this entire ball game. Yeah, particularly this half, haven't they? Cass slips off the arm tackle of the freshman Colin Parsons. So he's able to get up close to the 30. The Citadel will stop the clock Citadel. again. Their final charge time out of the half. 30-second timeout. So the ball game now, in a lot of senses, comes down to this play here on third down. If Wofford moves the chains, they can eat up almost oh, potentially the rest of the clock. Well, they've got, to, they've got to get two first downs. But the most important one, as you just said, is this one here. Uh, they're not looking at another play. They're looking at this one play. They've got to find their very best play that's going to get, work against this defense. Now, if I were the Citadel, I may do the same thing that Wofford did on third down against the Citadel when Wofford blitzed the linebacker. I would send somebody. I wouldn't just depend on four guys up front to get there. I would send a fifth. What looked like Cass had been able to get away from Parsons and get some extra yards, his knee must have touched back at the 28. So it's third down and five. Play of the game right now. Be called in once the Terriers see how the Bulldogs are aligning. Cass has to hustle here. He's got five seconds on the play clock. Wofford calls timeout. Time out. Wofford, their second charge timeout. 30 second timeout. It's not the worst case scenario, right there, is it? Well, the only problem is that you, you know, you're calling a play, you're on the sidelines, and the Citadel's already used their final timeout. You still have two, okay? And then you, you bring on a play, and you look, and you wait, and wait, and wait, and have to call another timeout because you don't have the right play. You have the right personnel in the ball game. Call the play Please that goes with that personnel. Game clock to 324, 324. It's in rocket science. Just football. Yeah. Here's what we've got coming up in the ensuing SoCon Games of the Week. This game has title implications. So does next week. Appalachian State at Georgia Southern. Chattanooga at Wofford, a recently announced wild card game, and we're still awaiting where we'll be on November 17th. Third and five. Terriers meet the 33. They go away from Breitenstein. Cass doesn't have anywhere to run. At the 30-yard line, he is pushed backwards. Dave Amrine, one of the defensive ends, was the first one there, stretching out the play, stopping Cass. And we've got fourth down coming up. I'll tell you what, Aaron, this is just outstanding defense. Watch these guys slide along the line of scrimmage. That guy out there, number 49, is James Riley. He's sitting out there. He's not letting anything get outside of him. He's not letting anything get inside. And he let everybody else just clean it up. Wofford is letting this play clock go down in order to use as much time off the clock. Then they'll likely call another timeout. Timeout, Wofford. Their final charge, timeout. 30-second timeout. Not only a close game, but it has been physical. We've talked about it all day long. Both sides have just been making some pad-popping hits. This is what you want, Southern Conference football. Don't you love it? I mean, these guys, we were talking about the corners and safeties. What a job these guys have done today coming up and making huge plays. Unfortunately, a couple of times for Wofford, they didn't put the runner on the ground. One of those was Nyam. He had Ben Dupree stop behind the line, spun him around. Dupree kept the play going, and that actually was on one of the touchdown drives. Citadel scored on their 
first two possessions of this half to make it a three-point game. Have punted in their last two possessions, but the Wofford offense, they haven't even crossed midfield this half. Adams secures it at the 32. All right, next week. If this one's big, so is next week. Appalachian State and Georgia Southern, year in and year out. This one has Southern Conference title implications. And it will again. We will be in Statesboro, 2 o'clock, for Georgia Southern and Appalachian State. You can get it on Watch ESPN and your Watch ESPN app. After the hitting in this game, Paul, you're going to have to change your plans. Make sure that you're watching that one with us. If that one's anything like this one, you're going to want to watch it. Is it next Saturday? It is. <laughs> that may be at the Civil Homecoming game. Aaron Miller at quarterback now. Probably because they want to throw it. The better passer of the two. That is a 13-yard strike, moving the chains to the 45. Dom Jones on the receiving end. The one thing that Wofford, just take a look at. Now watch the room that Jones has. Miller knows that he's got plenty of room on the outside, but watch the room that he has to catch this ball. There's just no way they're going to let, Shovel's going to let Jones get deep on him. Now they're going to let you catch the intermediate stuff. Maybe the move to Miller because the Citadel offense has punted the last two times. They're switching things up. Miller to throw again. This one's high. Looking for Jones once again. It stops the clock, a minute 58 to go. I'll tell you, the, the, the Wofford defensive line, these guys are tired. You look at them, when you, when, when you look out there and you see their hands on their hips, they're trying to get some air. Uh, they are not rushing the passer very well. They're not getting even close to the passer. So when you're Aaron Miller, you got to take a look and say, hey, you know what, I got time. I just have to be patient and find me an open receiver. Citadel had the 7 0 lead. Wofford scored 24 unanswered, then the Citadel has come back with 14 straight. Inside, two to go. Here comes the blitz from McCrimmon. The pass is complete to Thompson. But he is stopped not only shy of a first down by Sato, but also inbound. It'll be third down and long. The thing about it is, they read blitz, they knew it was going to be a blitz, and you're going to have a crossing pattern guy, but you've got to get him a little bit deeper because the linebackers are already gone. Get some room, some separation. Pulls the trigger late and throws it away. Probably best that one sailed on him. A little double coverage on Matt Thompson. They had to sign that guy in a white hat. Did you see the catch you made? That was absolutely perfect. Bob Bowden, the Bulldogs offensive coordinator, dialing up fourth down and nine. Siddle hasn't beaten Wofford in 13 tries. They need to move the chains here in order to snap that streak. They do not have any timeouts left. If they don't convert here, it's over. And the play is not a, a long play. It's, it's a 10-yard play. That's all they need. Don't worry about going way downfield because you got a safety play in center field. Just get the 10. Miller hit as he throws, and it is incomplete. Jones was the intended target. And the Citadel for turns it over, Wofford holds it. That's what I call putting pressure on by the defensive line and linebackers. Seattle number four was in there, and you know, when you put that much pressure on, you can't sit and throw. What a job by this Wofford defense. Watch this from the left-hand side, you'll see Seattle coming in, boom. Now he has to throw the ball, and it goes up, and it floats on him. In the 13 games that Wofford has beaten the Citadel, the last 13 times they've played, the average margin of victory has been staggering. It has just been huge. It's been by about 20 points per game. Citadel came here, they were down 24 to seven. They put a fight into the Terriers. But in the end, it was the Terriers defense that became the difference, stopping the Citadel momentum in the fourth quarter. I just I just like what the Citadel did. I mean, they, they waited a little long. They started out in the, in the game, what, 75 yards on the very first drive. That's right. Go down, throw the ball three times, complete three, and then score. But then they got away from it. And then in the third quarter, they took the charge of this football game and almost pulled it out. Wofford will escape the upset bid 
of the Bulldogs. The Terriers who were also playing a couple of men down. They didn't have Donovan Johnson offensively. They didn't have Legrand or Thomas defensively. They didn't have their kicker either. But how about this? Think back to the end of the first half. Redfern's career-long 42-yard field goal, which was tipped. It went through <laughs> anyway, and that's the difference in this game. Exactly. Think about it. I mean, you know, you, things happen. You know, they always say, well, home field advantage is great. You know, the thing about home field advantage that people forget is that the people in the stands are not playing. <laughs> and it was a great kick. I thought it was. Well, it was a heck of a kick and a strong leg from Redfern. He certainly showed that off. Redfern, who wasn't supposed to be kicking anyway because the starting kicker, Reed, is still out with his quad injury. Well, guess who will be kicking field goals from here on out? Well, assuming Reed doesn't get healthy, it doesn't I, matter. I, it's, it's a safe bet that Redfern can go. That's the difference in the game. Wofford beats the Citadel 24-21 despite not scoring a point in the second half. They stave off the upset bid. They move to 7-1. They keep alive their hopes of a Southern Conference championship. The Terriers also keep alive a shot at a very good seed in the FCS playoffs.